I always love when artists take time on release day <laughs> for people like us. Tanil, thanks oh, for this. God. Thank you for this. I, it was such a good day. There's no one I'd rather be celebrating with. So thank you, Raz, for lifting this song up. Lots to celebrate. Here it is, the Ides of March. Who said the Ides of March isn't an awesome <laughs> thing? <laughs> I know, right? It's it's a great day. I've been really looking forward to getting this song out in the world. And we got a whole tour we just launched today. It's a good day. <laughs> thing that brought me here is the song you mentioned. And a few weeks ago, we were all together down in Nashville, and we got yes. a, a sneak peek of the song um, live, which was awesome uh, <laughs> from you. And there's such a story. You talk about art reflecting life. The story of thing that brought me here, um, which, you know, in and of itself, the title, it could have a variety of meetings and it really kind of does, right? Tell us about the song. It really does. I mean, this song is about holding on to the dream, but to me, it's actually the symbol of the dream, which looks a lot like my old Tacoma truck that drove me 47 hours from Grand Prairie all the way to Nashville. And it's the only thing I've ever driven since high school. It's still what I'm driving around. It's definitely seen better days. I've been having to fix all kinds of things with it lately. The check engine light keeps decorating the dash, but I can't bring myself to trade it in because I've just become so attached to this piece of home. It's, it knows me. It's the only place, it's where I go and listen to music. Like I get a mix back and I always go for a drive and see how it sounds and how it feels. And um, it's truly is my piece of home. So I'm glad that this thing's going to live on through the song now. <laughs> right on. You know, so, you know, the thing that brought me here is about chasing the dream. It's also about the truck that physically brought you down there. And I want to talk a little bit more about that because knowing I was going to chat with you and about this song, what is it about a vehicle that really seems to become a, a part of us? I think it's because that's a great question. I think that it has something to do with the fact that like driving is, I think such a monumental piece of our independence. Like it's the first thing where we're driving on our own and like no one else is in the car hearing you scream the songs that you're turning up way too loud and that you're driving way too fast. Like it's, it's a moment for yourself. That's like, I don't know, liberating, I think. And so we become attached to these things. And for me, oh man, there's so many embarrassing stories of all the dents and scratches that I have in this thing. And then like taking that long trip with my dad and just thinking about the moments that we had in the vehicle on the road trip, like all those things become attached to this piece of metal, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, I know going back to my first vehicle, it was a 1983 chocolate brown Chevrolet Celebrity. Oh, wow, wow. So that's, that's what I mean. These things never leave you. It's just right there. You just know it. Dang, that's really cool. I oh, that's yeah. that sounds like a, a cool ride. I well, like that. I wasn't great at looking after a vehicle at that point in time, but the body failed me on that vehicle, but the engine never did. Mm, that makes sense. I mean, oh, they're just you do you really do get so attached to them. That's so cool. Now, um, the song is out, it's living, breathing, and uh, people will hear it <laughs> here on uh, Cool 100 and anywhere they consume music. Congrats on its release. Um, thank you. And thank you for playing it. I appreciate you so much. You guys are amazing. Well, playing hits is the easy part. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> you keep making them. Oh, thank you, Paul. <laughs> hey, one more thing. How many miles are on that truck? How many kilometers now? Okay, it's like, I think it's 250. Like oh, something. that truck's just getting broken in. I know. It's I feel like it should be more than that with the amount that I I drove it all the way here, but it's really the thing is is I spend my life now in a van that goes across all these places so this Tacoma gets to rest at home. <laughs> Well, the other reason that the Ides of March is such an awesome day for fans of Tennille Towns, you're going to be riding a van, all right. You're going to be touring <laughs> the place uh, in a tour that was just announced earlier today as well. You're going to be here at the Empire Theater on October 24th, and I can't wait. I can't wait, too. I'm so excited to be coming to Belleville, and this is our our biggest Canadian tour that we've done, headlining tour, and we're going all the way out east, and going back out west and I'm so pumped and like truly these shows where it feels like we we opened for people and then like stolen a few audience members from all these different shows we've been playing and 
And in the last couple of years, just seeing the community of people showing up at our shows around these songs of mine is just, it's been so beautiful to me to like witness what that community feels like in a room. And those have been among my favorite touring moments. So I've really been looking forward to this one and I can't wait to see everybody in October. I can't wait for you to get to the Empire Theater because most <laughs> people who've ever played the Empire will say it's one of the finest rooms acoustically anywhere in the country. That's exciting. This is our first time there. So I cannot wait to feel that. That Now I'm even more so pumped. <laughs> October 24th. Now, let's talk a bit about the music. I read a couple of interesting quotes of yours when it comes to uh, music. And, and you said, and the quote that struck me is that you're always asking questions in your music. And immediately <laughs> I thought of Jersey on the Wall, for example. But the fact that you say you're always asking questions in your music, I'd love for you to dig a little deeper into that. <laughs> because I think, I don't know, for me, that's what the human experience is. And, or maybe the human condition is a better way to say it is that we're always searching. And like, the point is not to find the answer or the destination at all that I, I really don't think there is such a thing, you know, and to me, it's like continuing to ask the questions means I'm hopefully being curious to learn more about the people I'm around and the things I'm going through. And so I hope I never quit asking, but to me, it's funny when it shows up in my songs, I'm like, Oh, there it is again, my unrelentless <laughs> uh, or relentless searching. <laughs> yeah. So between now and October 24th, we know we've got um, uh, the thing that brought me here on our hands. What else can we look forward to new music wise from Tennille? I've got some more new things that I've been working on. I went, I took a trip to Seattle at the end of last year and did a, a, a handful of songs at this like treehouse studio in the middle of the Washington forest. And I really, I really enjoyed that. And I love the songs that came from that. And I'm still in the middle of writing and recording right now, the rest of the project. So more to come very soon that I'm yeah. honestly dying to share. <laughs> But you can't. That's all right. <laughs> Not going to press you on that. Uh, it's Seattle's, coming, though. Yeah, Seattle's an interesting... And you talked about this a little bit when we were all down together in Nashville. And um, Seattle's... Not necessarily the first place that would necessarily come to mind when it uh, pertains to people going to to write songs. But I guess why not Seattle, right? I mean, why not? It's very... It felt... This particular studio felt very remote and just like... It felt good to get a change of scenery. I love living in Nashville. I love the creative community here. And I just felt... It, I was introduced to this producer that works out of the studio. And it just kind of happened to go, why don't you come and record here for 10 days? And I was like, why not? That sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was awesome. Good stuff. I can't wait until you can share more. <laughs> okay. Me too. <laughs> Me too. You know, on the philanthropic side, I know you've got a lot of good news on that front. I, it was fairly recently you raised, I think, another over $4,000, uh, $400,000 rather, for a cause yeah. that's uh, very near to your heart. Yes, it's this event that we do called Big Hearts for Big Kids, and it supports our local youth shelter, the Sunrise House in Grand Prairie, and they support kids ages 12 to 17 who are struggling with homelessness, and we've done this concert fundraiser for 13 years, which is crazy to say that it keeps happening, but my hometown keeps showing up and wrapping their arms around this place and just blowing me away with what happens when a group of people come together with something they believe in. And that to me is the best part of music is the way that it can do that. So it's been really fun watching that grow through all these years. Congrats on that because the world is full of incredible causes. This is true. And for you to embrace a cause that helps young people at such a pivotal time in their life, you know, that can really take them from this path and put them on that one. And that makes such a difference. So congrats on that. Thank you for saying that and believing that it's so true. I think there's such a sweet spot in our journey. That's like, I don't know, you catch somebody right in that pocket of time and you can really influence the direction of the rest of their life. So it's pretty important that these places in all of our different communities, you know, be able to stay open and keep running. So uh, I've really loved learning a lot about the work that can be done in that um, from from this event. Now, I think I read Dean Brody, Kelly Hammock, and Eric Pasley out there for that. And I thought, Eric Pasley, there's one of the coolest customers going, eh? I mean, literally the coolest customer. Yeah. <laughs> His songs are so great. And he's just got, 
such a like mm, just a wise soul about him like he he really has his heart centered in everything he does and I loved getting to to have him come to Grand Prairie and tell his stories it was so good you know I, I got looking you know and record label always sends us all the bullet points you know when we're about to chat with an artist <laughs> and I I kind of glance at him and then I hit record and we see what happens but one right. of the ones that jumped off the page at me was 17 times CCMA. I, and I thought, how old am I? That I mean, it's insane, but like, how is oh that even <laughs> like, how is this possible? How, I mean, literally, how is that possible? It is wild to hear you say that number out loud. <laughs> I really did a lot of uh, self-examination when I read 17 time. I thought maybe it's time for me to retire. My God. No, please. You're not allowed. <laughs> well, congrats on that. And the question it conjured up, is, you know, 17 times CCMA, you won a ton of awards and, you know, you you've toured with some of the biggest stars. And as you say, you've pulled fans of your own out of each of those shows. And now you're, embarking on another cross Canada tour. You've got your philanthropic work. How do you define success? Hmm, that's a big question. To me, success is, is hearing from someone about what a song has meant in their life. And it usually hits me in a moment where I get to like go and say hi after a show by a merch stand and like I could tell by the way their eyes are glancing at the floor like they're about to tell me something really mm -hmm. hard that they've been through and that takes so much courage to do that like an insurmountable amount of courage to go up to someone and, and talk about something that's been really difficult and like losing someone and to, I just that it's such an honor to be a witness of that courage and to like hear what what music what doors and people like music can open in rooms that we've just sort of abandoned in ourselves and it, it's that's my greatest honor is to I think witness that and to me that's the, definitely the measure of success is that songs are finding people when and where they might need them the most well keep doing it <laughs> thank you <laughs> I appreciate that uh, the, the saying uh beware the ides of march this year it's embrace the ides of march because we have a new single from Tennille Towns the thing that brought me here and of course the announcement of the tour that'll be at the Empire Theater on October 24th and um uh I think and I hope you do the same when I end this zoom call I'm gonna go get some ice cream <laughs> it's a good day for ice cream it really is i swear i will be getting some today i hope you do too <laughs> congrats on everything where do Thank people find all. Tenille towns on socials all the places just look to neil towns and i can't wait to hang with you there and thank you guys for listening to these songs and thank you paul for supporting this path of mine i appreciate it i cannot wait to see you in october <laughs> we'll see you october 24th to neil towns thanks for this thank you have a great rest of your day